that they had a Prime Minister who was Chancellor, oversaw the largest spending review increase for defence since the Cold War, and ensured that we went into the general election with a credible and fully funded plan to increase our defence budget to 2.5% of GDP by 2030. Whereas, whilst I welcome the fact the Labour government has said it is committed to 2.5%, we have nothing but uncertainty over their timetable. Indeed, Mr. Edwards, this morning I was interviewed by Kay Burley of Sky News, and um, she put it to me that the government's timetable is to reach 2.5% by the end of the Parliament, so 2028 or 2029. I said that was not what I understood the public position to be. But she told me she'd been informed privately by the government that that was the timetable. So I would be grateful if they would confirm now that we're in front of Parliament what exactly the position is, because this is a matter of great sensitivity, Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And let me explain why the timetable for 2.5% really matters. When the previous Prime Minister announced we would commit to 2.5%, he stated his top priority was to replenish our munitions. And that 2.5% enabled us to commit £10 billion of extra funding over 10 years to fund munitions. And it is a fact that without a clear pathway to 2.5%, and I know this, the Ministry of Defence would have had to make substantial cuts or deferments to programmes to afford that necessary replenishment of our munitions. That is why it is so significant and why we need to know exactly what the position is. Is Kay Burley correct that the Government have told Sky that they have a timetable for reaching 2.5% by 2028 or 2029? If not, if it is the case that there is no timetable for 2.5%, how is the MOD going to fund its munitions strategy? Will those orders for shells and missiles for the Army, the Navy and the Air Force actually be placed this year? If not, what will be the impact on our world-leading defence sector? And above all, what will be the impact on our war-fighting capability as a nation? Without a clear pathway to 2.5%, what will be the immediate impact on the Department's finances? Will the MOD continue to invest in cutting-edge capability like directed energy weapons and hypersonics? 2.5% would also have stabilised our biggest two defence programmes in light of the inflationary funding pressures that followed Putin's invasion of Ukraine. This is all open in the public domain. The PAC was talking about this in the lead-up to the general election. So, In particular, I'm talking about the nuclear deterrent and GCAP, our absolutely essential sixth-generation fighter programme. Now, I am delighted that we now have consensus between the government and ourselves on both nuclear deterrent and GCAP. But can the government confirm that there will be no impact of delaying 2.5% on the funding elements of either of those two major programmes? And can the Secretary of State confirm, that his, or, or the Minister responding, that his strategic defence review will conclude entirely before the next spending review commences, so that the review is threat-based rather than forced onto the financial back foot by Treasury considerations. Yeah. Of course, if the government's public position is of no timetable to 2.5%, they will inevitably point to the old chestnut of the public finances being worse than feared, yeah. justifying the inevitable cuts or deferments of programmes that follow. And of the greatest respect from the Secretary of State, but we did hear some of that in his opening remarks. But I'm afraid that excuse will not wash. Right. Inflation is 2% and on target. The economy is growing at a healthy rate and ahead of our competitors. Yeah. Wages are rising. Unemployment is almost half what it was in 2010 when we took power. And the, de and the deficit is forecast to fall to just over 1% of GDP by the end of the current forecast period. Compared, and they chunter. When we came to power, they talk about missions. Our mission was to save this country from bankruptcy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because once again, the socialists had run out of other people's money. The forecast deficit in 2010 was heading well north of 10 per cent. So we did the right thing. We had to take difficult decisions. We restored our public finances. And because of that, when the pandemic struck, when the energy support had to be put in place, we could afford that enormous support. And we're proud of that, of furlough, of saving those jobs, saving those businesses in every constituency in this country. We did it because of those difficult decisions after the mess they left us in 2010. So, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, our strong economic legacy cannot be used to pray in aid a cover for cuts and deferment. Well, Honourable Members opposite quibble when we talk about a strong economic legacy. 
Well, how else can you describe low unemployment, yeah, inflation at 2%, yeah, a low and falling deficit, absolutely. half what it was when we took over from them? Yeah. How else can you describe it? Yeah. Highest growth in the G7. Yeah. That's a fantastic inheritance. Yeah, yeah. So, Mr Speaker, far from being an excuse for the cuts that they will have to come to, those are the features of the very improvement in economic conditions that made our pre-election commitment to 2.5% financially credible and deliverable. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, to conclude, we strongly welcome the Prime Minister's staunch support for NATO, as evidenced in Washington, and we want him to succeed on his pledges to strengthen Britain's defence. That is in our national interest. But it's actions that matter and that we will, and the government will be judged by. And deferring and delaying 2.5% offers nothing but uncertainty to our armed forces at the worst possible time. So if they have a private timetable to reach 2.5%, they need to share it. If there isn't one, I urge the Secretary of State to persuade the Prime Minister and his Treasury colleagues to think again. Because in this more dangerous world, higher defence spending is a matter of the utmost urgency for Britain. Yeah. Yeah.